Uh, you know, we get to, uh, we have church here every Sunday at 1030. Just, I want to get that out there. I just had to get that out there. But just glad you're here. But what we want to do tonight is hopefully get some information in for you as a landowner. But before we get going with that, we want to thank the one that provided this great nation, this great county, the great state of Texas. I'm, I'm so glad that we can be a part of that. So if you would, if you don't mind, I'd like to pray for us. Get you started. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your kindness. Thank you, oh God, for giving us a country where we have the liberty and the freedom to live out our dreams and and plow ahead in life. And then, Father, I thank you tonight for an opportunity for us to just gather up and inform one another of what of the freedoms that you give us as citizens of the United States of America, as citizens of the state of Texas. So, Lord, we uh, as we gather tonight, as we just uh, listen and learn and ask. I pray, oh God, you give us grace, you give us mercy. And most of all, Lord, that you give us divine direction and divine wisdom that comes from above. And then, Lord, I pray tonight that we'd all gather something from this that would help us down the road. We thank you for that. And on top of all that, I thank you for Jesus Christ, through whom all things are possible. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you would stand. We've got Ed Myers here behind me. We're going to pledge to the flag. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May stand. You got, you got, you got the most important flag. <laughs> Salute. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to Texas. One state under God. One and indivisible. Amen. I want to say thank you tonight for Representative White coming and being with us, and uh, Mr. Jackson. And all of you. So we're going to learn some things. Uh, Y'all come on in. We'll find you a chair, guys. We'll get you seated somewhere. Got three right here. Mr. White, come on, brother. Help yourself. Thank you all. Everybody give yourself a round of applause. How many of y'all are just like me who was just riding home? Mind your own business, and you found out that there was a meeting tonight over here about you just didn't want to do nothing else. Okay, I'm sort of the same way. I, first of all, I want you to know that myself and, of course, my staff, we are extremely proud to represent you in the Texas House of Representatives. And we feel your apprehension, we feel your concern. This is something that's been boiling for years in this state. Let me tell you why I'm kind of upset about this. Last session, you sent me to the legislature to vote on so-called tax relief. And that involved this $10,000 increase in the homestead exemption. And then I started getting the calls for various reasons. And that $10,000 increase in the homestead that additionally you voted for has been vaporized by what's going on right now. Now I'm going to tell you here tonight, I'm not going to stand up here and make any grandiose promises that by next spring after the legislative session, this is going to pass and that's going to pass. 
And this is going to end. But what I do know, what needs to happen by the end of tonight, the people who pay the freight, the taxpayers, need to take back control of their government here in Jasper County. Y'all is 
death or in a situation. I think that you, have y'all gotten your praise notices yet? Yeah. Okay. Hard. Yeah. have you got praise notice? Yeah. Okay. So you are in a situation with Jasper. You are almost out of time. We can sit up here tonight and I can make a stern speech. Politicians will feel good doing that. I can listen to every testimony about my taxes increasing, my taxes, my appraisal values increase 9,000. Mine increased 1,533 percent. Mine increased, we can listen to all that tonight. I'll do it because that's what you've elected me to do. But that is not worth a hill of beans right now if you've got your appraisal notice. You've got to use the law. Don't get mad at what these other entities or like appraisal is on. They're doing what they're doing. They're doing what they're told to do or what they're supposed to do or what they think they're forced to do. Now it's time for you to do what you need to do as property owners. You own the county. You even have to mow your own easement and right away. I know I have to. So you own it. We don't have time to Time out for listening to you. And I'm going to listen to them because they're fascinating and they need to be on the record. Because there are people in Austin. There are people in all these offices that just think it's just a fad. It's not a fad. This has been going on over and over and over and over and over. you got to fill the protest form out tonight. Two nights. Don't worry, nobody's gonna not, nobody's gonna take your job, nobody's gonna look at you crazy. You don't have to worry about that. Won't be any retaliation. But tonight, fill out the protest form. Don't mail it. Don't give it to somebody and think it that outsource. Can't outsource. You see what happens when you outsource. You get outsourced. And aren't you out soon? Tonight, the protest form, it's got to go in. You have, if you're in Hart, Jefferson, Newton, or any other county in Texas, and you've got one of these notices, by law, you, have, you must protest. And you have to do it tonight. They got real, real fine print there. So, you know, so just do it tonight until turn in tomorrow. Don't wait till the last. You cannot wait until the last day. Things happen between now. I was supposed to be in Austin on, on, at some conference dealing with Purple Hole D. I didn't go because I couldn't trust that something would happen between Austin and here. I say here. You need to do the protest. Let me fill in some more information. I have people tell me, you know, the, the, the comptroller or the comptroller's people come down and force it. That may be some validity in that. I hear all these so-called conspiracies and things that do this, do this. But this is what I do. The property tax. The union. Yes, we have a statewide property tax code. For obvious reasons, we could have 254 property tax laws for every county. Could you imagine this? Times 254. So we got one. But the property tax starts with a that with a with an assessment value assessment process that begins here in your county, which what you call a county appraisal district. Those people are not hired by the comptroller. They're not appointed by the legislature. They're hired by people, your, your elected officials here, or the board members here. And some of them here tonight, I see some of their faces. Your taxing entity, entities, school boards, cities, counties, all local, you vote for them. 
They stand for election just like I do. They appoint members to the board of the directors of their appraisal district. These are people you go to church with, I guess. There are people you see in Walmart, I hope. There are people who own properties to the left and the right and across the, the river and all of that. I figure. None of these people serve in Austin. No one from Austin, I guess, that calls them. This is all locally generated. Hopefully we won't get much into the tax rate, but that is a totally different situation. That is set by your tax entities after they set their budgets. And you multiply the rate times the valuation, you get all the tax money that are supposed to come in. No pro except for the property tax equalization fund, and that's not a lot of money. For the most part, property taxes or assessed locally, collected locally, budgeted locally, and spent locally. State Representative White does not appropriate, because I'm not on the commission, I'm not on the <coughs> I'm not on the water district, or uh, what you call the hospital. I don't appropriate property taxes. The local government entities should be standing here. They set the rates. Right. They set the rate. Right. Now I understand you. Well, the legislature passed this, the legislature done this. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take responsibility for the pain that I may cause. And when I identify, fix it. I tried to with a $10,000 increase in the homestead exemption. But your local government officials set the rate. Right. They appoint the members. Then the members of the board go out and get the appraisal review board people. They're all people here in Jasper. They're all people in Harvard. You should be talking to them in the deacon's board room. Between prayer meetings. <laughs> you should be talking to them at the Little League football, baseball, basketball, little dribblers, hoopers, whatever you call them. You should be talking to them in the American Legion. Yes, round me up on something. But why is it the city councilman, the mayor, the judge, the commissioner, why aren't they here? Small government. 
I've seen a lot of big government go on with seven people, or five people, or four people. Amen, right. I've seen a lot of big government go on. And, and look, that's not criticizing them because you're in charge. You're supposed to be. So you got to do the protests. But thank you for your Facebook posts. 35,000, 40,000 seen and hit. All fine, but it's not worth a hill of beans if you're not going to step up, Pastor Lewis. Your rightful place as a man and say, I work hard to build this for my family. I want to leave this to my son or my daughters where they will have a head start on their local prosperity, their family prosperity. Let's just put it like this. If you don't do the protest, if you don't use the law that's given to you, you ought to just walk off your property and give it to the state. Testimony. 
a tree may be a number of years. And so it was the idea that you, you made consideration for that. Okay? But let me tell you, how does that impact the appraisal value increase? Because I'm, just, I'm not talking about the tax rate. I'm talking about the appraised value. Your appraised value should be based on the market value of property such as yours in your county. Not trees, not wheat, not cows. Go ahead. Do they ever get uh, an appraisal uh, That's increase? Yes, yeah. by the law. Yes, by law, yes. By law, yes. So, for example, let's say if they have a structure on it, okay, in the middle of the, the, the temple, you know, that is a praise. Okay? Now, depending on what that structure is used for, it's a praise as such. Yes, sir? When they lease their property for deer hunting, I'm not against my own. Yes. Um, if, if you look at the code a few years ago, the uh, again, sitting, sitting with the same stakeholders around the table, they understood that it was beneficial, okay, because uh, I read into this, that certain agricultural properties, per se, can be used for what we call wildlife management use, okay? Now, here's the catch. If they have a hunting lodge, okay, there, that hunting lodge is a praise. All right? Okay? So, again, my friend, I know you're concerned. I hear those concerns a lot. But that's what the politicians will tell you to do. Well, I don't know why you're mad at me. You need to go talk to him because he's not paying his fair share. See, they, see, their value is this. Well, the reason why is when you put a, a tree, a little bitty tree in the ground, you can't cut it and put it on one of the trucks the first day. So they give that consideration to it, all right? And once it's grown, then they have a full value for that, for that plot. So that's why these things are done. Uh, and with the, also with the, with the understanding that they're Industries, I would just say upstream, I guess, that are also dependent upon that crop. But again, that has nothing, that's, that's, that's a tax rate issue that we can have another town hall about with your tax entities and me, since I do that legislation. The deal here tonight, and you've been getting these extra normal valuations over and over for years before that legislation was even enacted. Right. He answered your question. But, but everybody is getting that same notice. Uh, large and small landowners. They are. And it, it's how you get and some folks have the ability to go down or, or actually, like Representative White said, if they can actually go down and protest. You've got to go down and protest. But everybody, if you've got it in timber and you've got to apply for that, then uh, uh, you're going to get your, your notice, just like, like your neighbor, whether you're large or small. All right. What did they have to do? Uh, they increased my stuff. I went and protested. And they took a vote to pray the district vote. They said, we vote again tomorrow. You're going to pay. Yep. Okay. Maybe we got it. Most of the properties have uh, 76 acres. Why, why are they doing it? 
I missed that point as far as the uh, of going to Market Bay. Well, I put Market Bay plus the future bay. And uh, I always tell you, Market Bay, you should be concerned about that. Oh, I see what you're saying. They're, they're showing the Market Bay that you're getting your timber bay works. Yeah. Yeah, it is ways too. But I'm just saying, Market Bay counts. <laughs> yes, it does. Because okay. we may not have this timber bay forever if this government gets screwed up much more. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he's say one more note. He's coming. And, and the other thing that I find out is a lot of landers have never taken the opportunity to go down and and uh, and, and visit the Fraser District and request an evaluation. Right? There's still a lot of people out there that pay a market pay, and as these rates go up, they they don't realize that. I. Several years ago, I had a lady come into the office and, and she was just beside herself. And I looked at her and said, have you ever gone down and, and asked for timber productivity? She said, no. She, she was completely clueless. And she's been paying that market day. There are things that you, you got you to go into that appraisal office that stands for it. And then if you don't like the appraisal, then you got to go productive. Uh, in the state of Texas, they have a I got a home in the Prince District. I have protested already. And they came back and made an offer to me. And I refused it. I'm going to take my hearing. Thank God. Okay. Here's, here's the case. They're crazy off of the appraised value. You understand what I'm saying? Not off of what you pay for or what you think it's for, but what they have appraised it for years ago. And then they're looking at what's sold. Saying, well, this property sold and it appraised for this much value, so therefore we're going to increase it. But they don't really know what it's sold for. Okay? So it's up to you to let them know what it's sold for. What do you think it's worth? Okay? Good point. Uh, and, and with that, uh, we see some hand, a hand back there. We'll get.
And then we talked about maybe more of an intermediate need. What's to, what would happen, you know, uh, at the legislative session? We only meet once every two years. Some things need to be done quickly. And so we began to think through the appraisal district process. And the one question I'd ask for you is, until you began, maybe even came to the meeting tonight, did any of you know how the appraisal district was put together and who ran it? Do you have a general idea? No. Show a hand? No. Probably not. A deeper question is, do you even know who the board of directors of the appraisal district are? No. You do not. So it became apparent from a taxpayer standpoint, one of the things that we've asked Representative White to at least consider when he goes to the legislative session is to consider a direct election of the managers of the Jasper County Appraisal District and every other county appraisal district so that you know who they are and you have some ability to go express your opinions to them from time to time, certainly in this kind of situation here. Right now, the tax entities are able by their votes to determine who is on that board of directors. Probably when the Pico bill came into being back in the 80s, it was conceived by the legislature that there would be enough political pressure on the tax entities that they would be able to keep the appraisal district in line because it was to their advantage to keep their constituents happy because Texas has always been a low tax state. But it seems like the other side of the coin has now arisen where there's a relationship that's developed between the tax entities and the appraisal district such that the ever-increasing need for revenue comes from the increase in value of taxes. That's the way they can say the tax rate stays the same. But if you look at the increase in taxes from one year to the next, it's gone up several million dollars. And the only way that happens is because of the increase in value. And so by having a direct relationship with those managers or board of directors and having a term limit so you were in a position to have fresh eyes every three, four, or five years on the process. <laughs> you are putting yourself in a position where no one is in a position for them to benefit themselves unduly in that situation. And that may not be occurring, but the perception becomes reality in these circumstances, and that's what you try to avoid. The appearance of impropriety sometimes has a greater impact than the actual impropriety itself. And you want to avoid that. So there's some things that the legislature can do in six months that they're being considered. But then you get to immediate term. What can be done now? I've got six days to do something that's going to affect my life income-wise dramatically over the next 12 to 24 months. What can I do? You've already heard. Fill out the protest form and get it filed. Just a show of hands, has any of you ever been through the review process where you actually go in front of the review board and they vote on it? A fair number, but the vast majority have not gone through that process. You need to consider doing that. One, the review board will get an impact on how serious this situation is. Secondly, you need to you need to get rid of the sir. I'm sorry. I'll hold it up higher. 
Secondly, you need to get rid of the fear of going in front of the review board. You'll walk in there and you think you're in Star Wars. You'll see where your tax money has been at work because they'll have screens up and they'll have pictures, they'll have satellite photos of your property looking down, they'll have properties of your exterior. He said, how do I defeat that? By common sense, you find properties that are similar to yours that have been sold within the last three to four years and determine those values in relationship to yours. The fact that your air conditioning system is having some problems, you may not want to tell the world about it, but telling the appraisal district about it is important. The fact that you haven't repaired one of the leaks from one of the hurricanes, maybe you just have a bucket catch collecting the water, is important to tell them. The fact that your stairs or your carpet are in disarray and need to be repaired, or you have other kind of uh, termite damage or anything like that. All of that comes into play. The age of your house comes into play with regard to determining its value. So each of you are in a position to know that about your own respective properties, and you want to look at that in relationship to its current value. <clears throat> Another thing you need to be aware of is Obviously, in the south end of Jasper County, there's been a lot of growth. Up around the lakes area in Jasper County, there's been a lot of growth. But in the interior of the county, particularly in the city of Jasper, there's actually a reduction in value of some of the properties based upon current sales. You need to know that and find that out. Uh, the appraisal district is not going to tell you about that. They're going to ignore those. Where do you find that? Sir? Where would you find that? You're going to have to look. You're going to have to talk with your neighbors. You're going to have to go around and see the for sale signs, Century 21 or Almond Company or Rayburn Realty or uh, Keller Williams. Look at each of these different signs, see what's being sold. See who's moved in. Uh, your neighbors may or may not be willing to talk to you about those, but look at the newspapers. See what the prices are there. Uh, go on the internet. Uh, look at the for sale home prices there. Get a feel for what those are selling for and what they've got your price for. Check your square footage. Your square footage is very important. If you've got a 50-year-old house, that's important in relationship to it being a 10-year-old house. All of those have factors that become very important. We need a package. Bring a package with it. You bring your package. And the law is, is that the appraisal district has an obligation to furnish you the information that they're going to use against you in your proceedings. And, and you think about that for a minute. You pay the taxes to provide their salaries and their equipment, and they spent months preparing this plan for the increase of your taxes. And you get the notice you got 30 days. How does that happen? So one of the individuals at our meeting said, you know, really what needs to happen here, and he was trying to convince Representative White of that, is that we really need to do this in a year in advance so that we're not picking values and having to make determinations in June and July of this year for a tax rate that goes into, and values that go into effect three months from now. It should be a year and three months from now so that there's adequate time for you to not only fight them, but you, for you to raise up enough information among yourselves to be able to present good information to the board. Uh, are there any questions? Yeah, what, 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 no, we're gonna, let's, let's transition into that, Mark, and you'll, you'll have a lot of questions too, Mr. Dawkins. Okay, yeah, let's get into some questions. Uh,
We see a, a mic. We'll, we'll get down to you. We see a mic right there. Yes, sir. I have so many questions. I don't know if I have time to ask. Yes, ma'am. Well, one thing is, what if we've already gone up there like four times to the tax assessment? And by the fourth time, we're wore down. And we signed the paper saying that we agree to the taxes that they're going to put on us. We're, my husband is 82. I'm 75. It was supposed to be fixed when we were 65. Is that not true? Okay, what do you mean by fixed? Well, taxes were so bad. Pros, okay. Okay. Well, now they want to raise it unbelievable. Okay. Unbelievable from what it costs. Okay, this is, this is what we need to do. Are there. And we have taxation without representation. Okay. I want to know why in the 80, well, I'm saying 84, they created our road. We have free access to the garbage. I mean, there was just all kinds of, but now all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, but through the year, we're not willing. We're not represented by anything. Okay. Okay. And uh, thank you to your husband. Uh, I think someone is taking notes. Let, let's get this lady's name and address because we got an issue here. If she is over 665 and over, she is supposed to get an exemption. That her and her husband is supposed to have that frozen. If that's not it, we got to get that fixed first. Okay, we got to fix that. And on the issue of uh, on the issue of on the issue of I got an answer for you. Okay, let me let me finish this here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the questions as the mic microphone comes around so people can hear. So we'll get a microphone back there too. And the issue here about going over back and over and over and over again, uh, you've got a structural issue on getting with your local taxing entities to get people on these boards that are responsive. But ma'am, I don't think you have an option. But go back. It depends. On, look, let's get your name, and we want to get to you specifically. Get some up. If, if we have anybody going around getting her name and contact information, and we want to get back with her, email address, cell phone, all that. Satellite, family, Google, all that. Okay. How many, how many microphones do we have? Okay. Can we get one on this side working, working up, and, and stop right there on, with him in a gray shirt on the way back? Yes, ma'am. I asked that question about the taxes being frozen at 65 because I did turn a 65 last year and they told me my taxes would not go up again. But when I got the notice, they were sky high. So I went in to ask that question. I said, you told me last year that these taxes were supposed to be frozen. Well, yes, ma'am, but you see, some property does go up in value and when it does, although you were 65, your taxes will increase, not a whole lot, but they will increase. That's what I was told here in Jasper County. Okay. Uh, there's a nice lady with a pad that's a real, that's a personal individual. We want to get you, get you information so we can try to get you in the right spot. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't mean to hold the floor, but yeah. I've never made it back because the guy from Liberty probably jumped to $5,500 right there. He went to protest it. And he asked, how did y'all find this? Where did y'all get this? And they said, well, any property that touches Highway 146, we just touched it. And he said, well, what property did y'all use? So he asked for the paper. They said they wasn't going to do it. He said, I've got a right for it. So after 15 minutes, they gave him. He looked at it, and most of them were one acre, two acres, you know, which was sell high. It was just a house or something. But he's got a horse farm in 2000, only 200 acres. And 
and they jacked his farm up to $5,400 per night. But he's got the paper now to compare all those entries. They got to give it to him. They didn't want to, but he showed it to me. So tell them I want to see what y'all compare it to. Okay? Thank you. And uh, a mic right here. There's somebody right behind you, but we need to start getting to the back and around and over on that side, too. Right here. Yes, and we need to get over there. Yes. Yeah, you can go to arbitration. 
when it gets out of control, you're not going to win. It's not going to be one. Okay, but Martin, okay, I understand that. And those are some things we can look at legislatively. But what I have to tell people, now Tyler County, you and I share the same county, we're a little different right now. They haven't really mailed the notices. Hopefully, your calls to your elected officials is slowing some of this down and getting it reasonable. But I have to tell people, the first step is, is you got to protest. I, I, well, go ahead. The only thing else I can say is not one penny more. Okay. Not one penny. Okay. It's, it's, we're, we're taxed as much as we can stand as a people. I agree. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, I would like two of the other ladies. I would be 70 my birthday, and I had my taxes uh, frozen, whatever, when I turned 65, and they went up considerably. Okay. Can, can I have someone take your, your name, and we'll, we'll get back with Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Over here. I'm sorry. I read there's around 20,000 of these taxes sent out, okay? And my question is, you know, I think we're already pushing the 30-day limit to protest. I don't know how many board, uh, appraisal boards there are, but I considering how they're going to accommodate if probably more than half these people decide that they want to protest and meet with them, and are they going to realize that they may have to uh, extend their 30 days to take care of these protesters? This is what I would say to that. You do your job in filing the protests, and they'll work that out. So, okay. Well, well, let me get let me get you with a mic. Okay, so I can hear you. Where is the mic? We got a mic over here somewhere. I've got this Joe over here. Yes, sir. Okay. I like going to the pressure district pretty often. I own some property. The first thing when you go in there, I'm by myself. It ain't all of us. They pick you off. They tell you what Austin says, or they tell you what legislature says. You got a problem with, a, with an appraisal on a house? Oh, it, it's a hundred years old. It's got cracks in it. You tell them about it, but it's it's not put to you that it's that it's taxed at that rate. It's replacement value. Okay, it's they're talking out the side of their mouth. It don't do any good for me going there by myself. I have done some good. It, don't get me wrong. I've had some. Victories. But I'm losing the war, and the rest of these people are too. You're just one person, and you're at their mercy. Um, James? Where? Right here. Okay. Look down. Down, down, down James. James? I get it. James. Okay. So this guy has the mic too. Okay. In Harlan County, we had a wonderful appraisal district about eight years ago. A wonderful appraisal district. We, what they told me, we failed two years in a row. We failed from Texas, which I guess are soon to come through. Control. Okay, come from the control. Okay. Until then, we we made it. We were in good shape. But because they took care of everybody, or they they didn't get the value they thought they should be at. Okay. They come down and all of us. And they says, you failed. When? This was four years ago. Four years. Four years ago. Okay. You failed, Hardin County. Okay. You better get this right or, you know, we're, we're going to come back. They come back the next year and said, you failed. Okay. Now, they tried to explain to me after you failed two years in a row that your school district, something's frozen. Does somebody know the answer? Well, this is what happens. The... The comptroller actually applies the values that they have come up with, and those replace the value. Well, let me ask you this question. As I looked in Hardin County, too, I don't think I had one school district that failed the property values. This was years ago, man. Okay, I'm talking about years ago, but I, I'm, let's, let's talk about now for a reason. Did not, because, the reason I say we talk about that now, Look and see if your school district principal 
and then all of the school districts in your county, and I can send you the link to it. Did they pass the property value set? And I will tell you this also. The appraisal district can protest. If they fail, they can protest. So did they protest? Yes, they did, okay. and they won the protest. Okay. Okay. And then after that, at the next year, which would have been the third year, they got back up into their their comfort zone with the state of Texas, and they have not failed since then. But they said if they fail, it's 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 bad. Okay. Well, look, I've been a school teacher. I tell a kid, if you fail, it's going to be bad. They need to do their job, get reach to the market value. They haven't failed since that. No. Okay. They just need to do the Okay. But now their job, their job is putting everybody out of business. Okay. Again, I, I hear you. There's the protests. And, and, and the protests, okay. you know, sometimes work. Most of the time it does not work. Because those guys in that room in there are ladies that are on the board. They have been briefed by your chief of okay. They have been briefed. Look, we think we're right. We're not coming in here if we didn't think we were right. Okay. So, as my daddy always says, they're going to do what Alex tells them to do. Okay. And, and so, that also gets back to the point of a structural issue with the servants that we have on that board to make sure that you get ones in there that are responsive, and I think there's something to be said about mixing it up every now and then. Why, you know, why keep having the same people, if that's the case, over and over again, get some other people, people in. But that's a structural issue that we'll probably have to take care of through legislation. Who's got a mic? Yeah. Hey, I've got a quick question. Okay, can I get this guy with the mic here? No, no, okay, let's go right here. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, sir. Can, can I, yes, can I, okay, yes. sir, 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 let's, let's maintain under control, okay, yes. I understand, you go go ahead. Thank you, Tony. Uh, <clears throat> I agree with Jeffrey over here, I've gone in and I've protested. You kind of feel like you're barking up an empty tree, but the main thing is, I challenge each and every person in this room, because I cannot do it by myself, Jeff can't do it by himself, but go down and ask questions, protest and figure out what they're doing to you because you don't budget your money every year to accommodate increase in taxes. All you do is you try to make your way and pay your bills and get along. So when you get an increase in taxes of 100% or 150%, you have to protect your budget. That's a, you have to get into an emergency fund. So go down and talk to them. They're not going to chop your head off or anything. Just go down there and get in their face and say, let's, let's talk about my past. So I challenge each and every one of you. Thank you for that. Okay. Mike McCall. You know, uh, it's good to see uh, you represent the choir and uh, thank uh, Mr. Jackson because where is the comments he made and you know, I'm far from there. Uh, but uh, we got a lot of complaints, but we need to change leadership. We need people that fight for us.
be back here next week. Okay, we will. Obviously, I've been given, and I'm listening to the ideas right now, Mr. Sessions, and ideas, you know, yes, you have to protest. I, I can't, I just have to stress that. That's got to be part of the process in the immediate sense. Legislatively led, yes, we can go back. We can look at the uh, transparency of these issues. We can look at the transparency on how these people are chosen. You talked about the taxing entities. Taxing entities, for the most part, must conduct open meetings. Now, there are instances where they have to go into executive session for obvious reasons when it's dealing with uh, employees and that sort of thing. And the same thing with the uh, appraisal group. Uh, like this gentleman just walked up behind me and stated, they are having these meetings at least once a month now. And they're open. Yes. They post it, they post it. Now, of course, no one's going to send out a Facebook message and say that the, the appraisal board, direct, board of directors is having a meeting. Yeah, What's, What's important is that these taxing entities are going to be selecting or voting on who they want to be their managers or directors over the course of the Who they want. My question is, what is the accountability to these people that are being put you in there? Vote. That's, that's not right now. Now they're hired and now they're appointed. You may vote. But, but, but Doc, Doc, I'm not fighting. I understand. But, I understand. But there are tons of positions where people are appointed, but they're appointed by someone that's elected. Okay? All right? So, but here's the point. And I'm just throwing this out. If you're not holding the ones that are elected accountable now, just because you have some low more elections, I'm just throwing it out to show it's still about voter accountability. And you can ask the school board member, you can ask the county commissioner, what is your philosophy on choosing people for the appraisal? You can do that now. This nice lady on Joe. Do we have any of the uh, appraisers from Jasper Moon tied into the county in here? They need to be up there where you're at taking the heat. Well, they're, they're getting a checkpoint. They might be giving some answers. We're not getting any answers out of you. You're trying, and I appreciate everything you're doing. Well, what, what answers are you not getting? Well, there's several people in here asking questions. About, about what? All the questions. No, but no, are no. Any, oh, here's my question. Okay. Are there any of the appraisal board members here tonight? Oh, and by the way, in Newton County, Margie Herring is our appraiser, and she has been appointed for years. There's no way to get her. I'm not aware of way to get her off of that. Okay. Talk, I would say it under the... Hey, my friend, my friend, I would tell you this. Let me address your first point. When I'm dealing with individual issues where seniors are not getting their exemption, it's best for me to get their name and number and circle back with them, okay? Complete. But at the end of the day, like Mr. Sessions asked, politely, who appoints these people? The answer is the elected officials from each taxing entity. Who are they, Mr. White? Sir? Who are these people? Let the county commissioners. County, okay. Let's start the dance and tell the people who are. No, 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 it's not a dance. No, it's not a dance. Taxing entity. The Who county commissioners, county commissioners, your school boards, your, school board, your, city, your city councils, and city councils, and any other entity that that collects taxes. You may have a hospital district. It differs, maybe slightly from from county to county. I think you need to know who to talk right. to. Yes. Who to vote against. Yes. That's what we need to know what the dance is all about. This time when you go to vote, if you talk to your county commissioner, vote him out. Put somebody else in there that will run for run against them people. Okay. Now you know who to vote for and against. Okay, let's 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 say there's a city council giving instructions let's, let's to the board that determines the taxes for somebody that's not the city. Okay. Vote let's 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 stay close to the mic, okay? Let's stay well, okay. Question. Here. That's fine. That's yeah. the question. I think well, I, I can't hear you. Let me get a mic over there. When did these taxes? Yes. Let me. Let me. Let me. Can I? Can I? Answer that. Let me. 
Jerry McCaffrey, Joe Folk, Johnny Gray Gravis, Bobby Biscount is just listed as a non-voting member, and George Allen. That's the Jasper County. I need, I need you to try to get to a mic so all, everyone can hear. Keep your hands up. Let's get a mic to everyone. Yes, sir. Hi, good evening. Thank you for taking my question. Um, my name is Jaron, and um, we've been uh, Texans for five plus generations back when it was the Republic of Texas, and as many of y'all here, we, we love our state, and we want to uh, keep holding it dear to our hearts. And this is a question that I think maybe you would have the most influence on. Um, as Mr. Jackson had said, the, one of the best ways to uh, fight these increases in property values is to uh, take pictures of, say, crack, crack slab, uh, uh, you know, torn down uh, uh, things. But what I want to touch on is I, I believe that uh, this is an invasion of privacy. I don't want to go and tell a group of people I don't know from Moses that I use coffee color Texas pecan uh, dye in my cement or my slab. That's none of their business. And I want to keep this in the hands of, uh, of, the, of the people who are voting. And, and I think it's an invasion of privacy and there should be a better way of doing it. We should pay our taxes and we should uh, strive for a better state, but it shouldn't be like this. Thank you so much, and I very much agree with that. <laughs> My friend, directly to your point, we're going to have to look at some, we're going to have to have the legislature look at some other situations where we get everybody in the community, everybody in the state paying, where it's not so intrusive, there are ideas out there like consumption tax, also called, called like a sales tax, that we can consider. Those things, those are things that legislators can consider. But I will tell you here tonight, because I think too often politicians get up in front of people and tell them they're going to go to Austin, they're going to do DC, they're going to do that. Obviously, I'm going to look at all of these, all of these. And I have filed some of these bills. But I've got 75 people in the House to convince maybe uh, 19 in the Senate, but we will continue to try, and I believe you're, you're absolutely correct. Some of the techniques and strategies that these gentlemen are, are talking to you about, yes, there's something you may have to do now, but they are very intrusive, and they do sound over, overly burdensome and unmarried. Yes? Uh, I'm actually uh, here kind of sort of for my own. He has property uh, adjoining mine. It's landlocked. There's no way to get through it unless he goes through either our property or Martindale's property. When the, uh, the uh, ag exemption changed where you have to have 10 acres, he's got like 4.8. When it changed, his property value went from $3,800 to $17,650. He's been down there talking to them. Well, he's 86 years old. So I didn't know that there was an exemption if you're 65. I didn't know that. So there's, if, if that property is worth $17,650, he'll sell it today. You tell him what I want. Right. And, and that home state exemption, you're not talking about that, that's for the homes. I mean, that's for the
Uh, I live in Jasper County, and I have approximately 30 acres. I have a Jasper Newton Electric power line going through the property. I have been had exemption for 20 years, and my taxes went up 115 percent. That is, again, phenomenal. Now, I, I'm talking to people in these offices, these chief appraisers, well, not directly to these chief appraisers. I'm talking to these commissioners and councilmen and so forth. And I'm telling them this. I mean, I don't think, I, you would not, you've got more things to do. What, tonight's Tuesday or Wednesday? Tuesday night. You've got more things to do than be here on a summer Sunday evening. Are they just trying to get everybody to move out? Because a lot of people can't afford it. And you're going to follow through on the protest again? Yes. yes. Thank you so much. Can okay, we get a mic, filter mic back that way? And then around. Yes, sir. Yeah, would, would it help to get a third party appraiser in to look at the land, look at the house, and document everything? I know. I, I know you can do that. I know that for a fact. I, and then I would say, I'll let do that in okay. And then I would say, reach out to your these board members because each CAD has rules, uh, bylaws that they that they have adopted as well, and see if that's part of the bylaws and procedures. I would, I would do that. Okay. Okay, I'll move it back this way. And, uh, yes. I have a process question. I'm Carrie Malone. I'm a doctor of physical therapy in town. Okay. Um, I've already protested. So it sounds like they're going to be really busy. Because <laughs> there's going to be a lot of people protesting. How long do I have to wait to get my case heard before the review board? I think there's a post. Come This could be as soon as 30 to 40 days, or it might be as long as five or six months, depending upon the number of people that approach it. We try to limit you to 15 minutes, but oftentimes your information that you need to provide cannot be provided within that 15 minute period. So I think it takes longer than they actually plan to uh, provide. And so certainly if you extend out 25,000 I, I do have a follow-up. Um, one of the things that I learned when I did go protest is that my property is valued differently than my neighbors. And they couldn't justify it. There were no codes that were associated with that justification either. So the appraiser told me that I could report them to the state. Who would I report them to? Okay. Let me tell you something. That's absolutely Let me tell you something. This is serious. This is serious. I'm not being a bit real serious about this. If you're getting those types of answers and the appraiser is putting the information in, let me tell you this also. According to law, the company, when you're, while your property is under protest, the comptroller can't even convene. I mean, you know, I'm listening to what one person over here said. How many of you have even talked to your county commission in the last four years? How many of you have even talked to a county judge in the last four years? Okay, let me tell you something. Because I see them all. But let me tell you something. If you say you're not getting the services that you deserve, Get why aren't, well, why aren't you up at the courthouse? We got to work on it. Um, yes, you got to work it. But you can, you know how to get up to the courthouse. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. Representative, why I appreciate you coming right here over here. I know. I'm gonna get the and, next person. Uh, Oh, yeah. I appreciate you coming and listening and uh, the concern. And I know the emphasis is put on us protesting uh, our property values. 
Well, I've done that in 2014, and uh, it can get into a lot of other things with our crew bonds, and uh, I have a problem com just completely with the way our tax is set up. When someone that doesn't own property can vote on a tax increase for you. Yeah. And
profit value. Yes, I know we lost that sixty-five dollar, I mean sixty-five year old exemption. I understand that. But no way in earth or in hell those taxes will increase from seventy-nine thousand to ninety-eight thousand dollars. My sister protested, and they did blow them back down. But here we are two years again. Is this a fight every two years that we're going to have to put the gloves on for? Well, I'm going to tell you this, Pastor. Thank you for your question. Thank you. At this point, i got to tell you what you need to know and not what you want to hear. Yes, it may be a fight that you have to take up again this year. But, but here's the thing, like this gentleman said here. Let me just tell you this story, real quick story. I, I, I want to get this gentleman here. Please, I've got to get back to this gentleman, okay? Here and there and then back over there, okay? I know I have something out of I was at a realtor meeting somewhere in Texas a few years ago. And they were up in arms about their praise and singing. And, they, and, and the real the people, the, their, their leadership, their body, you know, you know, folks who do a lot of the policy stuff, say, we know for a fact that, it, that sometimes some appraisal this will just put a number out there. If you show up, maybe they make a deal. Maybe they make a deal. Maybe they make a deal. If you don't, Because that's why I told the nice gentleman that's the chief of praise of the title. I challenged him to really look at sending out 24,000 notices and already talking about lagging 30% because I told him this. If you send out all those notices and it comes back, everybody's stuff comes back 30% more, everybody knows you didn't go out and look at 24,000 prior with the staff you had. And I, and, and, and I told him at a point it becomes an integrity issue. Yes, You're signing stuff. People are signing valuation statements. They're signing taxes and, and, and budgets. And everybody knows that this is a farce. It would be better to just say, hey, I'm going to try to look at a fourth of them, a fourth of them, a fourth of them, a fourth of them. I got my four years in, look at each property and, and, and do it all over again. At least there's some level of integrity there. Give it. Uh, I've owned property up here for about 10 years. I live in Beaumont, and I've protested. Every couple of years, it comes out, they get us. Yes. If you want to have any hope of winning, there's a couple of things you got to do. you got to know your property real, real well, and you got to go find other similarly situated properties that are built, similar materials, similar size, similar roofs, and find out what they appraise those values at compared to what yours is out of that. Does that make sense? Well, if they all break time, You're right, and that's the problem. I'm just telling you right now today, if you want to lower your taxes now, what you got to do? Okay, I fought this fight and I've learned, you know, to do something, and last year I took a little bit further. But anyway, if you want to have any hope, that's what you got to do, because the first thing they're going to do is throw out lots of information, things to sell out pictures on big old PowerPoint. They start throwing information at you that you don't understand and you don't know anything about. It. And when they do that, they're like, uh, then you're like, well, how come you can't argue against that? Well, this number, this code on your property, Mr. Duke, means it's got to be at X amount of dollars per square foot, and that's what we did. See right here at Appraisal Review Board? This is what I did, and this is how I got that value. And that's all information you don't know anything about. And at that point, you can't say a whole lot except to kind of agree with it. So you've got to be able to, at that point, say no. Okay? I realize you got my home value at $100 a square foot, but there's five other properties that I have right here that are built very much like mine. They're similarly situated on similar streets and such, and they're all valued at $75 a square foot. And by law, the state of Texas, if I understand correctly, if you can show them a sample of similarly situated properties to yours, they have got to decrease the value to that sample size within 10% of the mean or the median. That is a law. Now, if you tell the appraisal review board that, they may not change it because then what they're going to tell you is we're not a legal system here. This is a quote, and this is a sad quote, Mr. White. This is a quote from the appraisal review board member last year, two years ago, that I talked to. 
In which hand? Uh, Jesse. This is what he said. Okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Duke. Um, uh, you know, my too funny. Um, we don't, we don't really know what we're doing. We just do what we think. <laughs> and I wrote that down because that's the honest truth. The appraisal review boards have no idea what the law says or how the appraisers are done. And they're listening to the chief appraisers giving them information. Because basically what you're doing when you go in there is you're presenting your information to the appraisal review board. And is that consistent or does it disagree with the appraiser is presenting to them? That's what you're doing. And they're going to decide, is the appraiser correct or are you correct? And if you know your property really well, you go find other properties that are very similar to yours, that are valued much less per the tax code, by law, they've got to lower your properties. Last year, uh, two years ago, I went in, they lowered mine a little bit based on that information. I had 20 properties within half a mile of mine that were similarly situated. The values on those 20 properties, this is the land, just the land on it, range from $3,000 per acre to $166,000 per acre. That was a discrepancy. Guess who was $166,000 per acre? You're looking at it. Within half a mile of my home up here, there were over 20 properties, and I didn't even try hard to look, okay, that were valued that much less than mine. And they basically said, I'm sorry, Mr. we can't do anything else. We're going to lower yours to X amount. And I said, well, I'm not happy with that. What can I do? And they told me to go to arbitration. I went to arbitration. The arbitrator listened to our information. And he awarded me exactly what the average was. Uh, actually, $34,000 per acre was the average. I had only requested that to be reduced to $45,000 per acre because I was trying to be a nice guy. And, and he had only lowered it to what I had requested. So they were lowered to $45,000 per acre. I just got my taxes. My lots are now at $150,000 per acre. They will come back year after year after year. They're going to battle. And for now, all we can do is fight. But we've got to go in there with information. And you got to present it to them. And we've got to go by the law until Mr. White can maybe do something different. If you want to win, that's what you're going to have to do. I was told by the chief appraiser in Jasper County going through this process, they had never won an arbitration. He had never won an arbitration. And the way the arbitration process works, you pay a couple hundred bucks, you send it to the state comptroller, um, they'll contact you, you select an arbitrator off the list, off the list. I got an attorney out of Houston to come over to Jasper and do it. I, I didn't know the guy at all. But he came over, he listened to what I had to say, he listened to what the Jasper County had to say, and, and he awarded um, the, that to me. After that, I think you can sue them if you want to. But that's the basic process of how that works. And uh, tonight, tomorrow, this week, the only way you're going to make a difference is go in there and do that until some, some laws um, have to change. And if all of us will go do that and show up, hopefully they'll at least get consistent from family member to family member, from property to property, from house to house. And if they will do that, then none of us can complain. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Yes, uh, uh, I represent the political party myself. I'm president of the Tea Party here in East Texas. Uh, I came by uh, James Your office about a month ago with this exact same thing that we're discussing here tonight. Okay? I saw your letter being posted on my site this morning, and it said that he made a statement to you that he didn't want you to be blindsided. Uh, this, this is a plan that they have had in the appraisal district, if you go online and look in Jefferson County and Tyler County, they're all they're the exact same thing. Even the plan to write you a letter to inform you that there was going to be a lot of people like us complaining. And that's why I made it public. There's a, all of them, everybody here. You know, I spend probably half of my day every day investigating things with the U.S. government. There's, thank God the state of Texas is <laughs> Republican. Well, they need to watch it too. They need to watch it too. Uh, 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 they need to watch this it is too. a plan uh, that they have, and it, the, there's one thing that's not in this plan. Why do they even need to run? Uh, are they broke? I don't think so. They don't tell us any reason why they need this money. Uh, we have a big police department. We have a nice school. Uh, this, this is a beautiful community. And don't they think that we deserve the right to know why they're going to increase our taxes 30%? I believe we do. And, and that letter was 
specific photography. Okay, I, now I know y'all have in some other cameras, y'all have seen some stuff. But uh, that was specific to Tyler County. And, 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 and let, me, let me put the record, because I know there's a video running on this. Because some people said, well, you know, I tried to make this guy look bad. Or uh, he wrote a letter to me. First of all, y'all catch this one. Anything on my state account is subject to public open spray. So you could have got it in. Two, he was already going around the county talking to the Lions Club, Rotary Club, Homeowners Club, all these groups, anyway. But, you know, you have single moms working jobs from nine to nine. You have people working shift work. They don't get to go to Lions Club. They, don't, they can't go to Rotary Club. How are they going to get the information to know what's happening to them? So I had to get the information out. And when you're, it's important for the elected official, glad you got this, this video going. It's, good, it's important for the elected official, if you're talking to an unelected official about tax, somebody's property and taxes, and you just have a, a what is that, two way discussion? A two way discussion, that is not a good process. So it wasn't to make him look bad because then he goes, he turns around and says, Martin, well look, I've been talking to the Lions Club, the Rotary Club, and I've talked to State Representative White. And now he'll have, the impression out there is, well, State Representative White is okay. Or he's in the, he's, he's in the, in the mix. So it's important that we get, because this was coming ahead anyway. I was getting the calls and, okay, this was coming to hate. And it's, like I said, it's better just, just as somebody said, you got to crack the head and you got to meet it. And then we're just going to see who wins the night fight over the next few weeks. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Uh, I have a similar situation, kind of like Mr. Hood and uh, the past I went through. If Thank you go, if every two years, you're going to have to go back and fight with them. Here's the thing don't go in there and pull out a piece of notebook paper and unfold it. You've already lost. Okay? Go in there with a file to show that you've actually done your job and, and that you're not just some blow by the way or whatever. You come here and you actually know what you're talking about. You're going in there to talk about it. We all have similar problems that we're going through right now. The main thing is, people, that we do have to go back to the people that run this county. That is a county judge and we have four or five or six commissioners that you have to talk to. If they don't see things our way, well, then it's okay to campaign against them and to replace them. We do have some pretty good ones, but regardless, it's still the big government is what's holding us down right now. Uh, and if we can get you to push your legislation through, where no elected official can vote for his own race. Amen. And that was, uh, that was pretty okay. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. And I'm, I'm approving of that. Okay, am I, am I, am I in the middle here with a, with a mic? Yes. And then I'm coming over here in my church. I just wanted to, to make people aware of one thing. When you send in your protest letter, your notice of protest, you do not have to be prepared to go at that moment. You need to send in your letter now, then you have probably up to 30 days to prepare your information. So don't panic and say, I'm not going to send in a letter because I, I'm not ready to protest it. They're going to contact you. And, and say, this is the time and date that we pick. If you can make that, fine. If you can't make that, you can also say, I can't do it that day. I need to request another day. Then I would say, all this goes back to Rick Perry 5,000 years ago <laughs> when he lowered, capped off school tax rates. And he said then, watch out because your local appraisal districts are going to come after you on value. And I knew right then he was a bad, bad guy. <laughs> okay. In varying ways. The question was, does this happen across the Texas in varying ways? Yes, sir. Quick question. Is there such a thing as a maximum tax raise that can be done? Or is there a cap on how much can be your taxes can be raised in a given year? Yes. Yes, there is. Uh, and what is that? That's 8%. Uh, 
It sounds to me like that we got a lot more than eight percent. And is that as somebody just said now, now, say, now. is uh, what about on, on things other than home set? Okay. Is there a cap on okay. that? Yes. And, and let me let me do something real quick here with you, okay? This this let me ask you a question directly. There is a cap on your homestead as far as they can raise the appraisal, the, the appraisal value will impact an increase in your taxes, and that's at 10%. Okay, now, but, but let me let me let me do something real quick here. The focus here tonight, and I know we're gonna get into these other things tomorrow, okay? But the focus here tonight is on appraisal value increases. And it's important to keep in that in that in that box. Okay. Tax rates are set by whatever taxing entity it is. Whether it's the state legislature, the city council, uh, county commissioner's court, etc. And uh, I've been very, very cautious up here, and I would hope that other elected officials. Well, let's say this. I would hope that people on these appraisal review boards and um, board of directors, board of the appraisal district, I would hope that they also are not talking about revenue. Because that's a serious problem if you have people on these two bodies talking about revenue. Because revenue has nothing to do with market value. That is a political decision. Now I know what eventually happens to get dropped in Greece. But that's that's a, that's an ultimate decision that should be made in a political body on a vote. And that's the tax rate. So I just wanted to separate that. I know they're related, but it's important to separate them. And then you, you see clearer what's going on in some of these, these discussions in some of these rooms. Okay, Mike. Okay. Here, what David Luther, that chief of prayer in Tyler County, is doing today, we've been doing in Master County for years. Our taxes go up every year. We find them. They throw us a bone. We walk away feeling okay. And by the time we get home, we realize they hammered me still. When they come down, but I still got hammered. Home ownership has become a burden. My wife and I saved for 20 years to build a house. Right now, I ask them. You move in a trailer. They make a sick the ever increasing property tax. My friend right here got a house. Got a guy that can't talk to you today. You got a house, he go back to his trailer house. Right now. Right now. This is not the way home ownership is supposed to be. By the way, I'm grappling with you, but I appreciate it. No, no, we're okay with it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little frustrated. It's been going on for years. A lot of it probably stems from that same person. We got a lot of, we got a, we got problems with it continually going up, and I've already been told by JK, mine's gonna go ten percent from now on. That's not right. My house is fifteen years old. People, people in here have houses older, newer, whatever. The gentleman in the green shirt up here commented earlier about his three dollars. I think the man worried that his three dollars. Are not going to be able to pay the taxes on his house when he's gone. That's ridiculous. That's not, we should not tolerate this. We shouldn't tolerate it. And I think you're going to, you're trying to help us. But we're very frustrated because all our taxes are going up somewhat. Well, I'm very frustrated too. I'm, I'm a property owner as well. Frustrated from that perspective. And let me tell you why I'm also frustrated. You know, when I, as I told you before in my opening remarks, when I showed up here to Jasper after the session, I talked about property tax relief. And what's going on now, and what I told the gentleman over in Tyler County when he and I sat down respectfully to discuss this, I really feel like I've lied to my constituents. Because there ain't no more tax relief. With what I'm hearing, it doesn't, it doesn't, what, what it says, it doesn't matter what the legislature does under the current system. It doesn't matter what we do. Other than eliminating the 
property tax. That's the only way I think we can get out of that. And, and, and I'm frustrated because I, I, I stop by Marvin's deep store and say, man, yeah, we voted on this, we got this, we got this. And now he's here a year later and said, yeah, I've got something all right. Holes in my pocket. And so I'm frustrated. But, but here's the point. I know you're tired. I know you're frustrated. But you got to saddle up and you got to drop the program. Because that's the only tool you got now. Okay? And I understand you're frustrated with going through that. Again. Yes, sir. You got the mic with you? Okay. Uh, I've been passing the mic around, but I got a question. Okay. When I was growing up, you always tried to want a home on your own. You want to own property. But it seems to me it would be better if we really than it would be to own home. I bet mean, some people say you're doing that now.